on defense tonight, really serious claims. The FBI pressuring General Flynn to be interviewed without an attorney present. Well, that has now got the attention of U.S. District Judge Emmett G. Sullivan. He's now ordered Mueller to hand over all documents related to the Flynn interview by 3 p.m. tomorrow. And on top of that, then you have James Comey on tape boasting, oh, we totally took advantage of the fact that this is a new administration. We wouldn't have done this in the Obama or Bush years. Really? Here to discuss it more? Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan and the host of Sinclair's Full Measure, Cheryl Atkinson, is with us. Um, is this how we treat American heroes that we now brag, oh, this is something that I wouldn't have done or gotten away with a more organized administration yeah. like the Obama administration and the Bush administration. Uh, so I took full advantage. On top of the deputy FBI director telling Flynn he doesn't need a lawyer and that they wanted him relaxed. Meanwhile, because of the unmasking and the leaking of raw intelligence, something, by the way, Cheryl Atkinson knows pretty much about personally, um, they had a direct transcript that they shouldn't have had. Congressman, okay, yeah. when does this end and when do these people get held accountable? Instead of the people with the taxi medallions and the loan yeah. applications. Well, that's why we've always said we need a second special counsel because, you know, we can't put anyone in jail. We can just try to get answers. But you're so right, Sean. When you, have, when you say, I got away with something, that just tells you you didn't do it the right way. You didn't do it. You didn't follow the rules. You didn't do it the way you were supposed to. They were so focused on getting President, uh, getting President Trump that they were willing to set up a lieutenant general, a guy who served our country, as you said, 33 years. So that's the most... That's the most egregious part of this, what they did to General Flynn. The other thing I think it's important to understand is Mike Flynn ran the Defense Intelligence Agency. He had to know his conversations with Kislyak were being listened to, were being monitored. So he had to know that. There's no reason for him to come in there and say something that wasn't true. He just got caught because he didn't know they were setting him up like they did. And so Judge Sullivan demanding these documents is exactly what needs to happen. The dynamic trio, Comey, McCabe, and Strzok, uh, Cheryl Atkinson, you could relate this, you could relate to this, I'm sure, in, in your own way, um, especially on masking surveillance issues, but more importantly, I can't believe this has happened in our country. I don't care where you stand on the political spectrum. I think you're getting at what I think is the bigger story, really, and is underreported in terms of how big it really is, which is the surveillance and other alleged abuses implemented by some bad actors in our intelligence community. And the problem is, you know, I'm glad if Judge Sullivan is flirting around the edges of this in the Flynn case, but who ultimately does anything about it because those accused, as in the government computer intrusions to me, or other things that we've talked about, are the ones who have the prosecutorial authority. And if they're not going to agree to investigate themselves and prosecute themselves, and so far they haven't, then where do you turn in all this? I, you know, I, I don't know how we remedy this between... It, it, you go back to, they're all the same characters in this play. Yeah. And, you know, it struck in Comey writing an exoneration before investigation. She was guilty. Biggest slam dunk obstruction case ever with the email server and not responding with a subpoena and erasing and, and bleach bit. And then, of course, the FISA abuse. Uh, James Comey's admission, Jim Jordan, they didn't yeah. vet it, but he put a signature on this thing to spy on an right. opposition party candidate. They've committed a fraud against the FISA court. They don't even tell the judge who paid for it. So, well, yeah. it may have a political taint to it. That is not how things are supposed to work under this Constitution, he, under our Fourth Amendment rights. No, you're exactly right. He said in the deposition last week that he didn't even know that they had a legal duty, if there was a legal duty, to present exculpatory information to the FISA judge. Of course you have to do that. And for the head of the FBI to say he didn't know that they technically had a legal duty to do that is, is, is scary. The other thing I come back to, Sean, is never forget the bias that exists with these key people. McCabe, Comey, Strzok, Page, Baker, these key people. Remember the name they gave the Clinton investigation. Mid-year exam. Something they had to get through. They knew the fix was in. They were going to get it taken care of. It Kind of get through the mid-year exam. But what was the name they gave the Trump-Russia investigation? Crossfire Hurricane. Just the names show you the bias that was there from the get-go with these top people at the FBI who ran both investigations.
And Cheryl, they, they, if you look at what they did in, in all of these cases here, they're involved, the same characters, the same players, the same people that had a bias. They did this on week one of the Trump administration. Sounds like an insurance policy to me. Sounds like uh, a media leak strategy is coming thereafter. It sounds like an operation. And something I think we learned from Comey, I mean, I thought, I was someone who kind of thought this was plowing old ground to look back at the Clinton material. But in light of what he said, Comey said in his testimony that Loretta Lynch, the attorney general, should have accused herself and didn't, and was either compromised or appeared to be, not just from the tarmac meeting, but about some other unnamed material we don't know about. Number two, he says, had he known about Agent Struck and Page's text messages, he wouldn't have let them stay on the investigation that oh, they did that on mention. Clinton. No, oh, that's right. And they, uh, they wiped clean the phones of Struck and Page when he worked for Mueller. And you know why I question Jeannie Ray? And Andrew Weissman and Mueller's choice of, of his team, all Democratic donors, this is why. Yep. Pretty disgraceful. The author of the bestseller, Why We Fight, Fox News national security strategist, Sebastian Gorka. And the author of another bestseller, The Deep State, Fox News contributor, Jason Chaffetz. I read this about General Flynn. Okay, Michael Cohen admitted to these things. I feel sorry for him and his family tonight, but he admitted to these acts that he was responsible for. He's changed his position on a lot of issues. Now the media, they only want to believe the version that helps their narrative. Right. That's fine. That's politics. But he was pushed into General Flynn, a 33-year war hero, five years in combat, forced in, told you don't need a lawyer. The FBI doesn't believe he lied, and then he's charged with lying anyway because he's bankrupt, can't fight it, and they're threatening probably his kid. This is classic entrapment, Sean. If you listen to the testimony of the two FBI agents who don't think he was lying, if you look at what we now know about McCabe, who said, you don't need a lawyer, General Flynn. This is just an innocuous discussion. And then what do they do? They trap him in a process crime. Sean, everybody watching this show right now could be trapped in a process crime. I don't care how much of a Boy Scout you've been. Everybody has a faulty memory. And you say one thing on Monday, when you think you're in a friendly discussion with some fellow patriots, you think FBI agents, and then a week later, two weeks later, you, you remember it differently, that's it. You've committed a felony because you have, quote unquote, lied to a federal agent. That's entrapment of, of General Flynn. And then we compare this to a man who secretly taped his conversations with his client. Think about that. Michael Cohen admitted he's a liar and he's the kind of guy who has no qualms. The most sensitive thing a lawyer has is his relationship with his client. That exclusivity, that confidentiality. This man taped conversations with who knows how many clients. One of them is now the President of the United States. Uh, I know which man I believe and it's General Flynn. I worked for him in transition. I worked with him in the White House. He is a patriot, Sean. You know, I, I, I don't, uh, Jason Chavitz, you are like me. We've talked about this. My mom was a prison guard. My dad in family court probation. So many people in the NYPD. So two guys made it to the FBI. Deity in my family. They were the highest of the high. Naturally, yeah. we are inclined, we want to help our FBI. But if you're in a situation now and you want to help them and you're risking, if you don't remember something properly, remember he was illegally surveilled, illegally unmasked, they didn't use minimization, and they leaked raw intelligence on this man. Nobody cares about the crimes that were committed where they literally had the transcript. So anything that's not perfectly matched up in an interview to the transcript means that's a lie. That's how they're going to view it. 33 years. This is how we're going to treat this man and tell him, yeah. advise him, don't have a lawyer. What does that tell people that instinctively, like us, want to help our FBI? Not these corrupt officials at the top, rank and file, good field office FBI agents that are, are protecting this country. Well, look, uh, my grandfather was a career FBI agent. Uh, we have a great affinity for the FBI, but the upper echelon, it is now well documented, the bias and the animus that they had. And we have a, a great deal of thanks for General Flynn. You're right, 33 years of service. 
What's also very striking to me, though, Sean, is the difference in the way justice was played out, because I was a very key player in what was going on in trying to get to the truth with Hillary Clinton and her email and the transfer of classified information to a non-classified setting, putting people's lives in danger. I mean, real lives in danger. And yet the five people around Hillary Clinton, they all got immunity agreements with no requirement to cooperate with the government, no ability for us, say, in Congress or the Inspector General's office to make sure that we could go back and get the truth about them. And then you contrast how the FBI was acting with Flynn and Cohen and others, and it just doesn't feel like justice is balanced. Where is Horowitz on FISA abuse? Will we ever have an investigation in Hillary and the violation of the Espionage Act or let's say Dr. Gorka, forget me. Dr. Gorka has subpoenaed emails and he deletes them, wipes his hard drive clean, busts up his devices. Is he getting off? Yeah. I don't think he's getting off. I think he's going to jail. I got the wrong last name. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> well, uh, no, you, you, you support this president, so that right. means there's a double standard. Um, yeah. when is that, where is that justice? Or do we not have justice or equal application of our laws in America anymore? Well, it doesn't feel like we are having that equal uh, uh, application of justice. I know that the Inspector General is looking into the FISA abuse. That has expanded, and I don't think we're going to hear about it until the spring or so, because there's something like a million documents that they're probably having to sift through to get there. Now, once we have that information, the, the Inspector General can't prosecute. We have not had, Donald don't Trump has not have, had, shouldn't we have an had Attorney a General for two years on all of these other issues. Well, we should have a well, special example, counsel, uranium yes. one. And we need a real attorney general. Yes. You, we, we gave Putin we both 20% of our uranium and we have to import it. Um, the FISA the warrant where literally a dossier is paid for, Dr. Gorka, so, so not a, not a, with not Russian lies. That. Not only that, I think the biggest story is still out there and that's the unmasking. I mean, we've talked about what, for, for six minutes about General Flynn, a patriot who was trapped by a political use of the intelligence community and law enforcement. We know there are hundreds of Americans who are unmasked by the Obama administration. Why? At because a they 300 wanted... percent increased rate. Right. And then what happened? Just before the inauguration, the president says, oh, let's share all of this intelligence with seven times as many agencies as we did before, because who knows, maybe we can bring down the presidency. That's what we're talking about. The politicized use, the weaponization of the intelligence community, and potentially hundreds of Americans are affected, Sean. You know, and, and let's, let's stay on that, because if we really cared about Russian influence in the election, which has now evolved into, well, Donald Trump may have committed a felony campaign finance violation with no lawyer is ever going to buy into, intelligent lawyer, that is, right. except for these crazy, dumb TV pundits that are way overpaid and just incendiary in their hatred for two years of Donald Trump. So the question is, are we really going to allow somebody who paid for Russian influence with funneled money, interestingly, campaign finance violation, perhaps, to a law firm, laws, legal expense, not true, foreign national, Russian lies, fed to the American people, influence the election, and money kickback and the uranium deal that was signed off on. You can't tell me that, th that this is about Russia, because if it was about Russia, we would be after these issues. They're not after them. It's just like they only cared about Kavanaugh if he did something inappropriate, wrong. But they didn't care about Keith Ellison no. or Michael Avenatti. They didn't, they didn't jump the gun in those cases, which means they really just care about the politicizing of these issues. Isn't that what it's about? Yeah. Now, look, if you if you were serious about this, you would go look at Mark Elias. He was general counsel uh, with uh, the DNC. He advised the DCCC. He was involved with Hillary Clinton. He was involved with the campaign. He was involved with Perkins Coie, and he was also involved um, with the, the the Panetta Group. And so, all of those ties, millions of dollars going overseas to to attract this money, but you don't even get the sense that anybody is even sniffing into this. 
I, and it just that's where people I just think are losing trust have lost trust in the justice system because that was fundamentally wrong it's millions of dollars spent to affect an election by engaging a foreign entity and foreign foreigners to inv be involved in that campaign um, there's so that's much material out there and then you hear Mark Meadows talking about how they have whistleblowers on uranium one and they pass those on to the Department no, no. of Justice I, and I nobody interviewed even the whistleblower. He literally was yeah. within Putin's network in America, referred to Robert Mueller, yeah. the FBI director, blackmail, money laundering, corruption, kickbacks, yeah. bribery, all these things. Last word, Dr. Gorka. The president could pardon General Flynn, and he'd make a great chief of staff, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> you just got the headline on media. I just want oh, yeah. you to know. Uh, well deserved. Good to see you. Thank Congrats you, on the book. And same with you, uh, Congressman.